one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone. Special uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. President uh, Kathy Devlin, Tim Petrikas, Board of Selectmen. Mike Marinaccio, Chief Financial Officer, Brian Wissinger, Assistant Finance Director, and Kim Lettick, Operations Manager. Oh, Kim LaFleur. Kim LaFleur. Oh, Kim LaFleur. Too many Kims. I know, that's okay. Kim okay. We have a Kim Alligan, too. <laughs> yeah. Kim Alligan, Kim LaFleur, Kim Lettick, Kim mm -hmm. Savage. Yeah, we're, we're hiring too Kim Duncan, uh, lots of Lisa. Lots right. of Lisa, yeah. uh, The first item on the agenda is the staffing of the Finance Department intern. You want to take care of that? Brian? Sure. Um, I emailed all of you guys about it. Um, we've had it. It's in our budget um, for temporary salaries and so forth every year. Um, in the past couple of years, we, we haven't really utilized it. Um, but this year, as I take on more, I find myself struggling to get the day-to-day -day done. Um, and so, you know, in my past experience of being an intern here and, and seeing where it has led me, um, I you know, want to continue to kind of give that um, to the, the upcoming you know, generation, um, give them the opportunity as well. Um, so we posted a, a job posting for it. Um, we, I'm recommending Danielle Urban. Um, she's a junior at Western New England University um, in Springfield, Mass. She's an accounting major with a 3.71 GPA. Um, and she'll basically, while she's here, um, she has to do um, 120 hours um, for it to count as a credit for her school. Um, while she's here, she will basically do a lot of the day-to-day -day things that um, I put on the back burner, journal entries, fire billing, police billing, um, monthly bank reconciliations. It'll give her the experience going into the real world as well. Um, nice resume builder for her as well. Um, I would recommend $16 an hour. Um, based on that, it would cost us right around $2,000 of, of our budget um, for her to get her hours and her uh, credit for school. And how many hours a week is she um, work roughly? 10 to 12. Okay. And this would be through August-ish? Um, no, no, no. This will go through like end of May tops. Oh, just end of May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About 12 weeks. 10 to 12 weeks it would last for. Okay. But I move to approve the recommendation from Brian Wissinger to um, engage Danielle Urban from Western New England College for the um, part-time job as a finance intern. Through end of May? Through the end of May. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Comment? Brian, it was a great experience for you, but I remember reconciliation of bank accounts where you were so right to the <laughs> penny that you were walking out on the street all the time with a brief to go over and work with the banks to make yep. it work right. But if it, it really did help it helped us, but I think it helped you too. And you, pro I would you agree. proved your you proved your value very early on because you took it so seriously. Mm -hmm. And to this day, it's like you really are very loyal to the town of Summers and what you do. I hope that this will be as good an experience for Danielle as it was for you. Brian, I, I Brian is still so. looking for that lost penny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he'll reconcile it, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Additional discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item is a local traffic authority for the 38th annual bike MS cycling event on June 2nd. I received the attached letter from Trooper Mike Eby, which I'll read. Dear Board of Selectmen, I've had the opportunity to review the request from Michelle Zenek, Director of Special Events for the National MS Society. They will be hosting their 38th annual bike event on June the 2nd, 2019. All previous events were conducted in a safe manner without issue. If approved, the portion of the route that they would utilize includes Maple Street, Skull Street, Hall Hill, Four Bridges, Sokol Road, 
9th District Road and Penny Road. I recommend the local traffic authority approval of this event. I also recommend the LTA sign the MS Society approval form. I remind them that they must obtain a permit from the State Department of Connecticut Transportation for use on state roads. Sincerely, Trooper Mike. Okay. I move to approve the recommendation from Trooper Michael Heavey relative to the um, special events for the National MS Society under the provision that they receive from the state the permit from the Department of Transportation. All right. Second. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Review and discussion of possible vote on a budget. As you're aware, we have a Board of Finance meeting tonight at 7, seven o'clock to approve uh, both the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen's budget. So prior to that, we need to have a discussion and approval of our current budget. Brian, you want to lead us through that discussion? Sure. Um, I'll put together these books for you guys for um, <coughs> what we have created over the past two months of uh, hammering on the budget. Um, we've got it to this point with an um, increase of $524,148, um, 6.97% um, up from last year. Um, really, the main focus pages are 9 and 10. Um, salaries are up, um, and uh, with that is. Um, the addition of um, medics at the fire department, um, part-time employee um, from recreation, um, a restructuring of the, the schedules for the SROs, um, the, you know, the full year um, aspect of the transportation um, employees um, that were approved at town meeting, um, and then um, Salary increases um, for employees in town, um, averaging 3%. Um, so while the number, the 247 month number might look large, um, the majority of that is not raises. The majority of that is, um, you know, increases in other places. Um, you know, in fiscal 19, we had um, medics budgeted for one quarter of the year. Now they're going for the whole year, so you're making up three quarters of the year on two of those guys. Um, so it increases, you know, budgets there. Um, so, can you tell me the police restructuring of the SRO schedule, Brian? What that's right. So when we initially budgeted the SROs, um, and we budgeted them before we had the MOU in place with the schools, so we didn't know quite all the details yet. Uh, we budgeted them like any other part-time um, police officer in town, working um, an eight-hour shift, 12 shifts a month, um, 12 months a year um, is how we budgeted them. Once eight we got shift, the 12 shifts a month. Yeah, so 144 shifts um, total at eight hours um, a shift. So then when we got the MOU uh, with the school in place, they wanted them there from the time buses arrive until the time that buses leave, which turns it into a nine-hour shift. Yeah, just to put it in perspective, you're doing this budget in the April time frame, March, April, we were like doing now. This in, we were doing this we in February. These, yeah, we hired these guys like in what, July or August. Mm -hmm. yeah. School didn't start until September, so mm -hmm. I guess the budget was kind of done in semi-darkness not really knowing right. what the landscape was going to be yeah. when we got there. So once we began so. to see the trend, um, you know, we noticed we clearly didn't budget um, you know, their shifts correctly because at the time we didn't know what their shifts were going to be. We were making our best guess um, at the time. Once we got the MOU with the school, it changed their shifts. Each one is working three shifts a week, nine-hour shift. Um, you know, so that's works out to be more than 12 shifts a month. Some, in some months it's 14, and some months it's 12. Um, 
So the number of shifts um, is different. They were hired at a different rate than what we had budgeted. Um, so there was an increase there. Um, so there was, you know, it, it was very new. Um, we just, we made our best guess effort at it. Now that we know what it actually is, we can, you know, budget their shifts um, accordingly. So are we under some obligation to continue those 12 months per year then? Well, no, it's not no. 12 months because they act as um, part-time. Right, so over the it. summer they work just an eight-hour shift. Right. And then during school times they're working based on the school's MOU. Nine hours. hours. So we had a state police SRO prior to hiring the two part-timers. That right? was Trooper Michael Heavey. Yes. And, and what was the schedule then? Well, he was working five days a week um, in the school. And, and weekends. Eight hours a day, five, nine hours a day, 12 hours a day. Um, they'd get paid nine and a half, regardless of yeah. if he was there one hour. Or it was costing us 200 It was 200 plus, plus 240000 yeah. So. so Brian and I had a discussion about something I called labor creep, that I'm, I'm sensing that we keep adding and adding and adding. And it isn't just the salary increases, but it's these hours here, four hours there, part-time person here, part-time person there, and it's eating us up based on the info that you sent over, Brian. When I compare the 2020 budget to the actual expense in 2018, so over a two-year time period, and I just looked for any line that had the word salaries in it, I see a difference in two years of over $400,000, which is roughly 16% a 16% increase in our salary costs throughout the town, not including education, that to me is unsustainable and probably unwarranted. I think it comes down to us controlling hours. So if Mike Heavey was <coughs> nine and a half hours times five days, that's 47 and a half hours. Now all of a sudden oh. we've got 54 hours, right? You're out of context huh? though. Mike Heavey was uh, a contract, it wasn't a salary line item, yeah. he was a a third-party contractor to the town with a state police contract. So basically, it, it, hypothetically, right. there's a zero line item here, and there's three state troopers costing us $600,000. I'm talking we about say, hours, though, Mike. Okay, but I'm talking, you're talking about dollars. That's what you're doing your analysis on. Nope, I said labor creep has to do with hours. But you're replacing those percent. three cops now with town cops, part-time town cops. So you're actually... The analysis was done at the time to bu to have those people Replace. in place of that cost. So yeah, you have hours now, but we weren't you know we weren't measuring that third party. But I also hours. have a four hundred thousand dollar increase over two years that I'm trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. What are we getting back for that? Well, because we because added you those had bodies. zero, you we added zero you added bodies to your salary line item. The cops weren't in the salary so you went line from, item. You got rid of. Okay. You got rid of four hundred thousand dollars worth of oh, state oh, trooper, state trooper right. expense, and then you added right. basically right. about ninety thousand dollars worth of right. Of, um, and and the, and the same analysis was is somewhat similar in fire, where you have z you know, zero, uh, and then you have the choice of going out for ALS mm -hmm. uh, under contract or bringing it in house. So you, again, that salary line item is affected because prior to that, you don't you don't have those type of people in the house. One thing uh, I would add so to that is that in that in two years ago, it was a at, at the town meeting, and I think you were or the public hearing. You, I think you were there. It was a town meeting where there was a big desire to get rid of mm -hmm. almost all of the state. Yeah, police. there was. Yeah. So our was. job here then was, and I think you came in shortly after we were scrambling to fill those positions with constables yep. and they would be retired because we'd be saving money we don't have to it pay was. insurance and all that yeah. other stuff yeah I don't want to lose fact of the matter that we did save close to four hundred thousand dollars I'm not arguing that. okay no. I just want he's to arguing my, yeah I understand position. I understand yeah. what you're looking at I'm just saying that you, you got to put it in context of, of what where it came from because there was no salary line item for those police yeah. and they were there was a substantial amount of money there Oh yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. So, so the the two issues we have are financial and labor. So, so if we if we look at hours, if Mike was there nine and a half hours times five weeks, right, right, right. can we agree that that's forty seven and a half hours on a given week at the school? Mm -hmm. Now we've got three nine six nine hour shifts, which is fifty four weeks. So we, we've picked up seven hours times forty weeks of the school year. 
Mm -hmm. We've picked up 280 more hours of labor expense, okay? We seem to be doing that in dribs and drabs with part-time people with all this. So, so even if I take, so, so that's, the, that's the hours part that I think we're, we're not controlling well. Um, you know, the, the, the feedback that we hear from the town is that we're spending money on these resources and delivering less and less in services, whether, whether it's road maintenance or transfer <coughs> station hours or whatever. It's not adding up. So, so now let's go to the dollar side. Dollar side of the equation, if I, if I add the state police expense into the 2018 actuals, we're at $722,600. Yep. The 2020 budget, including state police and, and the other expenses, at seven sixty four. dollars still got a $40,000 increase in police in a two-year period on a $722,000 line item. That's a lot of dough. I'm just asking, are we managing our payroll well to well, minimize the expense for, uh, again, for salaries I mean, you're, and for benefits? You, you, the selectmen, have acted on that based on presentations made to you by the police department talking about what they need. Um, you know, we in finance, we're, we're going to do what you guys vote on mm -hmm. and we're going to pay what you guys say to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and you may be act asking some very valid questions and they maybe you need to revisit the structuring there. I don't know. Um, it, it's, it's probably at the best it's been um, operationally, I think, I so. uh, it, it, over the past. So, yeah. well, is it, is it right sized now and undersized then? I mean, I, at the same time you're talking, people were complaining that they weren't getting uh, coverage in, right. uh, in the early morning hours or late yep. at night. And I think a lot of those issues have been, uh, we didn't have a resource officer. People, were, some folks were saying it was a, a luxury item. Others were saying we need something. Oh, like I believe that. we need the resource so, officer. So, but those things cost money now. Is that hours and dollar creep? It might be, but I think every time we've, and, and we and finance have tried to make sure that you, the selectmen think this way, that there's a cost benefit done on each one of these things before a decision is made. That's there's, all. That's all and, I'm saying. And, and don't misconstrue. I'm, I'm not picking on the police department. I'm saying townwide. No. So well, I'm saying the same thing happens in fire. I, I mean, you know, wherever you go. Yep. But but the the overall additions. I mean, just if you look at this summary, you know, we're adding a part-time employee to recreation. The, the feedback is, yeah, but recreation pays for it. Uh, we've added the the transfer station person because we had to open the transfer station. So I get that we have to do these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm just wondering, are are we tasking our directors well? to make sure we're getting the productivity that goes along with the needs the town has so that we don't just oh. see a net increase of $400,000 on the salary. I line. guess you don't look at it. I, I mean, just for example, look at public works. Two years ago, they cut two bodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that was great. That and, was and, so, and we needed half a half a body, I think, in tax in order to, to make things work. And, and someone else, so it was a net zero gain that year. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, that, that's, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, and then Public Works early on here said, I think we might need a body. We said, no, you said you don't need extra bodies. You, you could. So we held, them, we held them down this year. We didn't allow them to increase bodies except for the transfer station, which was voted on. Uh, we did the same thing with uh, social services. They, they wanted an extra body yeah. over there. We said, no, no extra body. So I hear what you're saying, but I think it's being practiced. I think maybe your analysis is looking at us over a time of change and growth when mm -hmm. I'm not sure, you know. Well, and that's, that's the problem, okay? Yeah. So I kind of went along with the crowd last year and we got a lot of pushback on the decisions we made. So this year I'm looking a little bit more closely. Yeah, because, I don't blame you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you learn a little every time you go through this. And, and what I'm looking at, it's not adding up to me. It's just not adding up. Um, One of the things I, I thought about on my way over here is be, when we started to staff our police department we we, we really relied on a, our female working there our, our police officer retired police officer to do all the scheduling all the budgeting there's a lot of work that was not being touched that had to be done so having that in there now you don't get the complaints anymore the work is done mm -hmm. people come in Permits are there. Mm -hmm. You can find it, and yeah. that may not—that may be some of the creep that you're not seeing. 
but the difference is the service from that department uh, that wasn't there is now there. I I'm just I'm thought about it. I'm getting the impression that the, the growth, and the, this growth has been public safety, fire, and police. I, I don't, I'm not aware of it being anywhere else. Um, well, we've added three people, basically two in the transfer station and one ALS, but that's been. Right. Well, the transfer station, we again, we tried to stem yeah, that I growth, <laughs> and we're so told you, know, you 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 picked well, the wrong department. And we didn't yeah. have traffic yeah. studies, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. It's the oh. same thing I asked of Deanna with the buses last year. What's the ridership stats? I'm sitting here again with no ridership stats right. funding another bus. Um, I get right. that townspeople are frustrated that we seem to be spending more money without really looking hard and without getting the data we need to make the right decisions. And I don't know what to do because I'm not comfortable with what I'm looking at in these in these spreadsheets because One I don't understand okay. I don't understand the variances. One of the things I'm going to tell you so we added these full-time transfer station people and I don't I've never gone to the dump before but <laughs> started going to the transfer station and I'm the only one there. Mm -hmm. And they're hiring them to work the entire day on Thursday and the entire day on Tuesday. I was the only one there on Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's not like it's really busy, but they wanted it, and that's why we've done that. How do we take it away now that we put it back in there? You can't. Actually, we looked at that analysis, and I agree with your statement. We said we don't need all those hours. And as you know, we try to save or close that gap of about a quarter, about a quarter of a million dollars of loss. And people objected, and they spoke, and we reinstated it. They want the convenience, and they feel it's their entire. Yeah, they don't want to pay though, too. Right? But they, I agree. Should be free. Pay for it. They expect us to take care of it. Addressing the police situation, our primary responsibility as board of selectmen is to maintain the safety of this town. And I don't want this misconstrued. That no, I, I the, the, the police no. budget. It's no, all no, the salaries no. together. There seems yeah. like a giant growth in a salary expense line, and don't pick no, on the police you know, you for you it. Try okay, it. Here's, here's the line item: the assessor. Okay. Regular salaries for assessor ninety three five in two thousand eighteen were to a budget of one fourteen in twenty twenty. How the heck does it grow by seventeen thousand dollars in two years? I he went from a part time part assessor time to, to a full time, -time, -time assessor to full time, yeah. uh, with a market salary uh, comparison, and he didn't even get market. In yeah. fact, uh, if you it's look, look at most of the jobs that we we utilize the CCM um, database, which is what is paid to every single town in the state and we look for similar towns similar size and and then area towns around us mm -hmm. and then we average th th those salaries and come up with a mid-range uh, for the salaries mm -hmm. summers I can say it almost categorically is always on the lower end of what the market is paying in salary for positions and the people that work here work here because a they like it here and b they like the benefit structure here also sure. which is a good which is a good uh, attractive the grass thing. is yep. very nice on us. I tell but I think we have I do but I think we have to I think we have to be cognizant <laughs> I think we have to be cognizant of what the competitive salaries are vis-a-vis -vis other towns as Mike's alluded to because our objective here is not only to retrain attain retain and attract people and keep them motivated. And that's what we try to do in terms of our salary structure. Yeah. The cost is greater if we lose someone and then have to re retrain. Yep. Uh, an assessor, a tax collector, certified, coming to our table as a certified already uh, person that has experience in another town, that, that's a catch. That's a good oh, catch absolutely. for the town. She was wonderful. Um, any suggestions on what you might think would avoid the creek because I, I just, I'm not going to go to transfer station again. There's no way I'm going to. Oh, no, me but either. I really think we should be tracking the the uh, use on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I don't, wouldn't do anything, but the folks wanted it, but I don't see the crowd there. Well, as you know, in fact, I think you suggested that we change some of the hours. I know you added Sunday. Is that correct? For the Transfer Sundays the are town wanted Sunday, and yeah. they suggested we do Sunday afternoon, right. not Sunday morning. So I no matter what better. we suggested, people say, I don't like that. How about this well, day? So we we they to seem to be happy with what we have there right. now. So yeah. it, it has a cost. And, that, and 
you know, there was 150 people there that wanted that to happen. That was a pretty wide representation of, of the town. Um, and you I took some flack on that, Tim, too, because yeah, it's basically you the other people that didn't want this were out of it. So I understand that. Yeah. Well, again, it, it's it's trying to make decisions with with the date with the data that were presented. Um, I'm. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I can't draw parallels well, I, from my one personal year to feeling another. is coming out of industry. I don't think we're all staffed here. If anything, I think we're probably scrambling on certain occasions, especially on budget time. Uh, my job and our collective job as board of selectmen is to keep these people properly motivated and productive. I have the belief productivity is key to efficiency, and uh, that's what we've tried to do. Now, in terms of labor creep, as you call it. Yeah, I think in certain cases we mandated to have hire these people. When the town people say they want the transfer station up and we have no other choice except to go along with that. Well, again, I think it can it can go to scheduling. You know, I know we, we talked about overtime being a large component of that Sunday addition at the transfer station. Potential of overtime. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to hear from, from the direct from Todd. What options do we have, whether it's flex scheduling and you hire somebody to work a Wednesday through Sunday shift and have Monday and Tuesday off or whatever, but to avoid some of that, you know, th there's an awful expense to overtime that doesn't add anything to anybody's perspective of productivity. So far you we've know. been good about it. We haven't had to cover any overtime storm? shifts yet. Um, I mean, the snowstorms when they, you know, the transfer stations right. they closed and overtime happens. Yeah. You got to have overtime when there's a snowstorm. Yeah. I get it, but but for regular, we haven't had to cover stuff, so. either one of these guys yet. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're not they're making a big salary with their with for what they're getting. No, they definitely. I mean, but I do think that was a good point to make is that as long as it's working this way, that's good. But you know, you don't want overtime, and if that isn't. I agree with that. Perfect. Yeah, and I guess, you know, I'd, I'd like to test the directors with keeping their salary expense not more than 3% of what it was last year. And if that means that they've got to, you know, change the way they do increases or staffing hours or something, we, we can work with that. But, boy, I don't know, man. It's big increases. And, I, you know, I would accept from that the, the, AL, the addition of ALS. Necessary things that we need to do in town to keep the town moving forward, we can do. But for for most employees, based on what I'm looking at in the spreadsheets, it doesn't correlate to the three percent objective that's stated in this booklet that says keep raises at three. But at some point, we've got to stop the just general increase of everything. Well, we are maintaining raises at three percent. In New York, right? So it's additional positions that are yeah, adding. The, the the I don't want to positions that, that are that are really. Uh, so I mean, yeah, medics, the rec, the rec department has been growing, but that's that's a direct yeah. impact from the size of the programs that have been growing. And that's programs that are enriching and, and wanted by the town before school, after school type programs, which are basically self funded, um, and, self -funded. and we're funding a portion of that rec person. Yep. Uh, obviously, and then the rec fund itself is contrib actually in two ways is contributing to that salary and then also contributing uh, an additional um, uh, um, amount into the in, into the revenue side of, of our equation. So I think I think we're always cognizant of cost versus need, and that you have to overlay that with what the citizens want to. Sometimes you can afford it, sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the rec department. It has grown dramatically. That's where the demographics are. I mean, that that ninety three in that budget is an average three percent raise. That's three percent of salary line item. Um, yeah, that's, that's an average. That doesn't mean everybody gets one. Right. Some people get none. Some right. people get one. Some people get four or five, whatever. Uh, if you look over at the board of ed, they're at three point one. Um, so that that's kind of like the go and rate on an annual growth basis. Um, that you look yeah, that you're looking at, and even at that, we don't spend that entire salary line item. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Annually, that you don't. It's just it's, a, it's an allotment. 
You don't just say, well, we're, we have it, so we're going to give it. You, you give it where it's merited. Exactly. And then you, you hold some back in case you do have a need exactly. for overtime exactly. or something. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good way of planning it. And my philosophy has always been, you don't pass that 3% or whatever the percentage is, you increase across the board. Right. People are three, not created yeah. equal. Some people deserve more, as Mike indicates. Some people deserve less or none at all. If you're not getting salary increases, then perhaps you take a look at your job. In other words, you don't want to make 3% the average. That's for the those who have really no. just, you know, done their work and right. done it well, well and the did recognition. Huh? Did you just say you don't want to make 3% the no, average? I think what no, she's saying No, per person. Is 3 not every, no one, <coughs> not everyone should expect right. 3%. Yeah. But but based on a performance evaluation. Take you back four years ago, it was, okay, 3% across the board, and, and no, no, one, no one was getting an annual right. review. Yeah. We now do we annual reviews, and, and, and we tie yeah. um, salary recommendations to that. I, I get that. I meant I probably said that wrong because I was saying across the board everybody yeah. would expect. I thought I heard it. I thought I heard it wrong. Billy, yeah. I said it wrong. I heard it right. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody will get it because we yep. do have performance evaluation. I am halfway through the performance for all the directors, and we'll finish those up over the next four to six weeks. And then the directors are responsible for giving performance reviews to all of their folks, of which then the salary administration is dependent. That has not been the case up until recently, as we've discussed, which I think is fundamental in terms of salary compensation. And, and I would suggest, uh, by the way, which also relates to productivity. For those people that aren't productive, they don't share the benefits of a potential salary pool. I mean, I'm, what I think we've been doing, and, and, and you may recall this, I mean, I think we challenge, as the board challenges, every new position, Where'd you get that salary? How did you determine that salary? You, or, or if you don't, you should challenge the starting salary. Um, I, I mean, I've sat at the table and had to justify salaries. And I think the chief, fire chief, has, yep. has at times said that this is below market. Mm -hmm. that I can't get anybody. We need to raise a salary. I've done a survey. Um, so those are the kind of things that, that justifies it. Um, sometimes the market grows faster in certain job titles. I, I guess the, the paramedic uh, job is, is, is a, a hot commodity uh, right now. And yeah. by the way, if you're talking about so-called salary creep, we're going to face that again with the ALS. The med the That's what I'm the saying. Paramedics, yes. right? I call it labor creep. It includes hours yeah. and salary. Yeah, yeah. I understand. It's big difference. I get that we have to and increase uh, salary. You know, and the firefighters, too. Now we have a firefighter contract, and I'm not really sure where that's going to shake out. I, I, I heard they voted on yeah. it. and. Uh, and so there's going to be a salary impact, sure. and it's going to be felt in here. They may even change the numbers we assumed here. I don't know. And I get it. And it, it's like, it, you know, that's why I asked how long does the how long are we going to keep the intern on board? Because my fear is that we, we add four hours yeah. or ten hours a week, mm -hmm. and now it's forever, right? Yeah, no. Um, wow. no. I think I think we have a tendency. It looks like we have had a tendency to allow people to add hours. I uh, see. I don't. I don't agree with that. I'm against feather bedding, as I call it. In fact, I look at that pretty closely. I think Brian also looks at it. And I can't, I can't see those details that waylay that fear for me. But when I look at the numbers, the numbers are telling me we have a bigger expense, and I can't see the detail that says we're managing the resource well that drives the numbers. That's that's where. Why don't you go through what's included in the salary? Brian and I have gone through it. Okay. I still don't get it. How do we make it clear? It's not going to happen today. Is it a certain department? There's there's a variance in how we accounted for things in previous years versus how we account for them this year until I have some sort of consistent pattern. It's very, very difficult for me to see it. So are, there is are, nothing. Are, are you looking at the the uh, Well, like, like FTEs, right? Okay. I'd, I'd love to see an FTE history going back five years. I don't think we're going to get that today. I don't want that today. I think it's in the annual report. Yeah, for you. Okay. But I just get the feeling What's that we've that you added do? a lot it's of. It's in the book. We've added a lot of labor that's. Cap so the part timers yeah. more. Yeah, so we'd be in the cap book. Yeah, don't it's know. in the cap report. I'd be guessing. There's a 10 year history in the cap report. Yeah, yeah we have cap report. Well, I got it right here. I got a digital version. Mm -hmm. um, FTEs. What chart number is that? Mm -hmm. What 
you go back to the years. It is a 10 year history in our yeah. annual report. All right, 50. so. 2015 it was 57, 2016 it was 57 and a half, 2017 it went down to 52 and a half, um, and 2018 it was 56 and a half, 2019 it was 59, and then 2020 is projected for 62. And that includes the ALS. ALS. The ALS. 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 And, and also police, right? So yeah. police wouldn't be in those numbers until 20 2018. Right? Which is why you see the four yeah. growth yeah. job because yeah. we had new full timers come on. And yep. Yeah. Police was, police was five, um, and then they went to seven and a half um, between that. Right. Between those two years. But we also saved a gazillion dollars by correct eliminating exactly. the state police contract. Right. Exactly. Right. All right. I don't want to lose sight of that because our our mandate is to look at expenses, not the revenue side. But we've generated significant savings. Mm -hmm. and improved coverage in response to what the situation was at the schools, et cetera. And if I had to do all everything, I'd do it. And we saved quite a bit of money and reorganized that whole police function. Well, it used to be really scary for us to get that. Can you send me that schedule when you have a second? It's on the town website. Okay. Can I send on the page? Yeah. Oh, uh, my send it. would be easier. Print that page. I don't need to print it, just a, a link to it's fine, right? It's, it, what's so you would be looking uh, at, I'll email you the cap. You'd be looking at 18, 19, and 20 then, I assume, Tim, because they've bought from 17 to Yeah, 19. and that's, uh, the, Brian had sent me the, the details for actual 18, uh, 19 through February 7, I believe, and then the budget for 2020. So you're looking at the uh, year to date for a budget versus. Yeah, and I did the dangerous thing of having it straight yeah. line the year to date and bring it up to 52 weeks, which I understand the inherent defects right. in that logic. Um, there, yeah, there was not, where there were crazy things, we kind of walked through that on the phone, Brian and I, so, so I'm comfortable with that. It's just, um, you know, the, the noise that I hear from the public, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way, just the chatter that you hear from the public is that we seem to be inflating the number of people here without providing value to the town, and you can defend that a lot, right? Yeah, I could. I was, I was I saying can publicly, too, people want to come yeah, in here and spend a day here. Oh, they do. No, <laughs> and, and the day doesn't do it. The day doesn't do it. you got to spend like a year, That's even at the, at the low level that I spend so, a couple hours a, a week. Are more people um, here productive than other people? Yes. Okay, yep. but overall, I feel pretty confident that and the people that we have in place. And that's all depends upon what's going on in their office. Right. So, I mean, I just email it to you, Tim. Thanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's just yeah. So, I mean, let me respond uh, forthrightly to you, Tim. I'm very concerned about uh, any issues that result in people not doing their job or lack of productivity. Because in my opinion and experience, you either get rid of those people or you retrain them. But we can't afford not to have people that are productive and doing right. their work. No, Especially when there are other examples of people that are actually doing that. And I'm not going to mention any names. I think we've discussed that privately as to who's doing the job. And where we can have some improvement. So. so I guess if you take a look at uh, year to date on some of the analysis that Tim's doing, uh, Brian, and you project that through, would that change? Uh, yeah, I guess some of them, I mean, and I, well, there's, I, there's a little bump around room, but the, the biggest yeah. one that, that floated to the top was salaries. It just and a lot of it was just salaries, I mean, the other categories, a lot of it's, yeah. And obviously, the difference is we took a big dive when we too. got rid of the, and it looks like it's creeping up again, <coughs> I mean, but we that's could where not the growth is, that uh, either in the board of it or the town. Yeah, yeah that's always your growth always is always in the salary, salary line item. That's why I'm being and associated in benefits and, and uh, well, you know. Karen was going in between two departments. That was not effective. It wasn't good for her. No. And right. we needed that extra yeah. body in the town. Well, uh, it's we're, we're we're lean. If somebody's Absolutely. out sick. Yeah, and we're totally. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, and we are because uh, at yeah, times mm -hmm. we've had two or three people out sick, and you really are scrambling. You know, right, right. And, and you know, the, the, the problem and is the, a dollar invested never ever goes away in that line. Well, and uh, well, the part time person we hired in tax made us able not to have to hire a right. summertime Which person in tax. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, all the decisions were kind of well thought out before, yeah. and, uh, and their financial impact uh, was thought out yep. prior to making them. So. Uh, there were a couple items that made sense, you know, like the, the money that we're putting into Revell that wouldn't have been in a previous budget. I kind of get it. Yeah, yeah. 
couple things with contracted salary, contracted services for computers and stuff. So we'll have That's to get always that. creeps up, yep, too. Can't do yep. anything about yep. that. State yep. police were at the mercy of the state. Um, Public Works is only up 1%. That's good. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan and I talked about the uh, awesome. maintenance line for the fire department that is it funded Thank enough, you. right, to make sure that we that yeah. not only do we have staffing on the fire trucks, but the trucks actually work. So I can get that. <laughs> so is, is that so one looked a little low to me, but, you know, but they're as good. Soon as, as yeah. soon as we increase any budget for the fire department, we get pushback from the citizens thinking that they're... I heard the fire department was useless on Facebook. Well, that's oh. the point I'm trying oh. to make. Oh. Yeah, they, they, actually yeah they said we could call Stafford, Ellington, and Enfield. I'm thinking, yeah, that's going to work good until Stafford, Ellington, and Enfield needs their fire charging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you know they're going to charge for it, and it's going to cost us a lot more than <coughs> what we're paying. Once oh, I had yeah. an elected official ask me why we even had a high school, why don't we just bust the kids to Rockville like they did when he was a kid. It's like, mm. And, and, while and yet I've heard an too, awful so lot of other young parents right now coming to me saying, do not regionalize. No, exactly. So I get it. I mean, it's so. difficult. And like yeah. I said to you about all the math makes sense that, that Brian and Mike worked so hard to do. I just want to make sure that we're investing it well. Yeah, and I, I got to tell you, my personal philosophy is very simply uh, productivity. I believe. I believe in hiring the right people, putting them in a position to be successful. And if they're not, it's our responsibility as a first selectman or the board of selectmen to get these people in a position where they can't be trained and they can't be yeah. and I And I really appreciate the candid mm -hmm. feedback we can have at this level because yeah, sure. when you look at the numbers, they're telling a story that doesn't have all the detail behind well, it. Well, so uh, we try we to simplify this thing. And, and if we need more details and need to get it more I, refined, I think it's a good thing we'll do question. That. I, I, I really am, I, I embrace that. I, mean, I may argue with you about certain numbers and things, yeah. but you make our job, you make us better at what we do. You make us have to look at things two, three, and four times. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a good thing. That's good for everybody. Good so, yeah. But lots of times we're looking at things and we kind of forget the context with which, how we got here. That's all I'm yeah. trying, I was trying yeah, to Yeah, and Brian was out. so helpful on the phone yeah. with me Monday with that, with the, where were you? 40 minutes on the phone, probably maybe an hour, of trying to get my head wrapped around it. So I, I appreciate it. It's just, it's a bugger. It does, re <laughs> it does relate to timing. For example, last year's budget, we didn't get a budget from the state until October, right? Right. Uh, and so good. here we already had our budget set, so there will be changes and additions. And Not really. Okay. Frustrating. It's difficult enough to budget when you have the firm data. Here's something interesting I just realized. So we're talking about um, costs. Public safety in total, the total increase between the two was $13,000. That's. Yeah. And they I apologize they did that change wasn't things. Email, but I went right to the spreadsheet instead of looking at the PDF. Yeah, gotcha. Because that, that's really remarkable, and that includes the fact that they're doing things differently with uniform maintenance and mobile data, yeah. which is always very costly. This mm -hmm. is what we will present. I will present. I assume you're going to be there at the Board of Finance. This, this uh, I thought that constitutes a meeting that we have to warn, so you let you me know. I don't, I don't need to be there if I don't need to be there. You can watch oh, it online. Public meeting, the public hearing? Yeah, yeah. you can be uh, there. Public. Uh, board of finance board meeting. Board, board of finance meeting. That's tonight. Yeah, you're not participating. I might go take my nice personality to the other meeting tonight just for fun. What's that? Uh, well, we'll attend that later if we can get done sooner. So we have that tonight, but then Thursday night we have a select meeting. Thursday night we have a board of selectmen and, and the And the hearing yep. on the water. Hillsdale. Storm water. Oh. Okay. oh, yeah, that's right. Public yeah. hearing on the storm water. It's that kind of day for me. A select <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess so. I'll be there too. Yep. So I took two blood pressure pills this morning. Oh God! <laughs> Sometimes I should. Not going to eat a while the blood resuscitation, are you? <laughs> Not from <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. So uh, all right, this is what we're going to present to the board of finance as the board of selectmen's budget. So as long as you vote to approve it, and is this correct. is this part of what we need to approve before we no, go? No, this is something that they're going to approve okay, based on my presentation to them. The and I've side. given you copies of my presentation, which you have. Yep. There. You're this is just the revenue. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ours and it kind of kind of covers what's going on in the state. It's kind of oh, comparing uh, state allotments to us over the past few years. It's it's comparing our uh, budget uh, to the state allotment we're going to get. So it's it's pretty comprehensive. And then it shows uh, 
any delta at the end between expenses and, and uh, revenue. One needs to be made up, and that's their call as to how they want to approach it. And I appreciate, so the, and I appreciate the spirit of the discussion we had on the expense side, but in my opinion, this is a tight budget for the Board of Selectmen. I agree. Yeah. So for the purposes of the discussion, I'll make a motion that we uh, recognize the hard work by our by Mike and Brian in putting this together and uh, move to move this budget forward to Board of Finance tonight. Second. Any additional discussion? The only other thing I wanted to ask is where did the potential contribution for teachers' retirement land? Is that oh. okay? So yeah. that's a revenue mm -hmm. neutral. Uh, I had a talk with our with our CPA firm on this one. It's it's a revenue neutral transaction. And if you put it, if we put it in our annual budget, it looks like we're in, we're increasing the budget, when in fact what we are doing is taking money that's already been set aside um, in the general fund and moving it into a trust fund. So what we're going to no, do? No, not that not one. That that's that's not that one. The teacher retirement. The teacher retirement. I'm talking oh, about the the, oh, the, oh, the, the oh, sixty-nine thousand requirement yeah. that we have okay, to Okay. Well, we're going to. Th there'll be a request at the board of it. Yeah. Okay. Budget. I think Excellent. I sent you a note on that. All right. So. so, with that understanding that we'll, that we will request of the board of the of yeah. the board of finance to have the board of ed put that in their budget, then yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Put, and yeah. Good with this one. Okay. Yeah. We. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. The, the no, other I knew one the, was other the other one. one. Yeah, yeah. That one. That was yeah. explained yeah. to me a couple weeks ago. That yeah. one stuck. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's fine. <laughs> it's the other ones I have trouble with. But so, motion on the on the floor is to approve the budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, uh, guys. Yeah. Any other move for adjournment? I think that's well, wait a minute. Do right? we have anything else on the agenda? No. I don't no. think so. That's it. It's just stuff for Thursday. We have a meeting on Thursday, which will send the agenda. Yeah, I would probably like to, um, I don't know when we can do this, but I would really like to um, have our first selectman sit with us and go over the performance. Well, let's bring that up Thursday because we can't do it. Yeah, we can't meetings. do it Thursday, but I'd like to set aside a meeting where we could do that. Okay. Okay. okay do we need to vote on adjourning this or do we just adjourn? Yeah, we do. Adjourn. Adjourn. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.